Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. Do go and check out our last week's sales video. I'll put a link in the top description after this. You'll find that a lot of those deals are still on sale, so I won't be mentioning those. Things like Dead Cells, Moonlighter. Let's go for the new ones. Congratulations to the winner of our free game this week. Just check the top comment to see who that is. If you want to be in with a chance of winning next week, just leave a... Uh, well, just leave whatever you want, really. Could be a comment about the upcoming games. Could be a comment about these sales. Or it might be a suggestion that you want to make to everyone. What's on sale this glorious Sunday? Let's find out. First up, coming in at a tasty 60% discount, we've got What Remains of Edith Finch. Now do go check out our review of this one because it's a very interesting walking simulator basically, whereby you visit a relative's house, they live on an island and something horrible has befallen most of your entire family. The game plays out with you walking around a house, uncovering the mysteries of each family member, and then there's flashbacks of sorts which take you into the memories of that person. It's really nicely presented. It's very surreal if you're into surrealist art or surrealist media and has a beautiful soundtrack to go along with it. The one area I wasn't overly convinced on was the total game length. It's not an entirely long experience, but I'd say that most people that enjoy a narrative-driven adventure are going to get something out of it. For some people it can be quite emotional as well, looking as it does at life, death and everything in between. This sale goes on until September the 10th. It holds a very high Metacritic score of 88% and has a download size of 2.2 gigabytes. But that slightly shorter 3 hour runtime might not be enough for some people, but I'd say at this price it's well worth owning. <laughs> Then there's Gorogoa, which came out ages ago. Many of you may not have played this, but the developer absolutely nailed it. He wanted to create almost like a, an adventure game that's very different to anything that's been out before. It plays on imagery and almost works like some kind of surrealist picture, whereby you can look at certain elements of it and then go into that area. So it almost creates a new picture as you move the tiles around. There's absolutely nothing like it. And Jason Roberts, who did the designs and illustrations, really nailed a very particular look. It's quite a tough one this to accurately describe to you as really there isn't anything I've played like it before. It works well in handheld so if you're after a handheld puzzler it's particularly good in handheld this one and can be quite taxing on the brain. Now this has a Metacritic score of 83% again quite a short experience at around about two hours to complete but for £4.79 with a 60% discount it's certainly worth your time. These guys sponsored us a couple of months ago and I ended up getting a little bit addicted to it on my phone. They've just released a major update to the game. It's a little bit like a Final Fantasy MMO but on your mobile and they've added a load of new jobs to it. So you've got the new career which is the shop owner a la Moonlighter where as the name suggests you can open up your own store for other players to come and purchase your goods, your photographs, paintings. There's a new class, the fighter. But the coolest thing that they've added is the house system. You can now make your own home in Dragon Raja. You buy a property using the accumulated cash that you've made in the game. And as you'd hope, you can completely customize it to your desires. Then there's the air system. That's like air with a H, not A, you get a picture. Which essentially gives you an air to carry on your glorious name. And finally, there's the new class, the Reaper, which adds a few new features and battle modes. But I've got to say, it's one of the best looking mobile games I've ever seen. It's completely free to play. There's a massive open world here. And if you're after a mobile game that isn't just a slot machine, then this might be the one for you. Do check out the links in the description and you can download it right now. Continuing the adventure theme, as Annapurna do have some of their best titles on sale, we're going to look at one called Kentucky Route Zero, the TV edition. Now, originally it was an episodic adventure title, but this has all five of the episodes into one game. It describes itself as a magical realist adventure game, and much of it plays down that Route Zero highway in Kentucky. It's got a lovely art style, this one. I really enjoy the way it looks, and I'm not going to lie, it's quite unnerving. It's actually, there are times when it can be quite unsettling. And there's an emphasis here on the human drive to find community which is interesting and it plays out well throughout the story. Now this one's 30% off, taking it down to about 14 quid, which is a touch more expensive than the last two we've seen, but it is a much longer experience having all of those chapters. You're looking at maybe around about 9 or 10 hours and it holds a Metacritic rating of 87%. It's the first big price drop we've seen and I think you're going to know if this one is for you. This sale goes on until September the 10th. 
Next up we have Ashen, which I loved. Now it's another one that we've got a review of on the channel. There have been a couple of patches since launch. There were a few little janky moments, but it has an interesting, if not slightly unusual, passive co-op system where you may encounter other players in a similar way to that of Journey. You could then join up with them and fight against the evil in the world, invite them into the party, or just ignore them. It does have that Souls-like stamina-based combat and quite a bland but sometimes starkly beautiful world. It's, it's an interesting one this, I liked it. There's a bit of crafting to do here, you have melee and ranged weapons, and as you meet different survivors you then invite them to your town, such as the blacksmith who you'll then be able to recruit. There are some very cool boss fights and some nice little moments here, and there is the Nightstorm Isle DLC available as well. It's a shame really that they weren't bundled together. This one holds a slightly lower Metacritic of around 71 and a download size of 4.9 gigabytes. And to complete everything, it's going to take you around about 25 hours. That sale goes on until the 10th of September. Currently on sale physically in the UK, we've got The Witcher 3, which you can pick up for 30% off at the moment at Amazon.co.uk. There's not a great deal I probably need to tell you about this game, other than that I would probably put it in my top 5 of all time. It's won over 250 Game of the Year awards, which is no surprise, and it holds a Metacritic score of 85%, which seems a touch low in all honesty, but that could just be for the Switch version, which suffers from some slightly degraded visuals, but let's be honest, it still looks far better than it has any right to, particularly on a handheld console. Now, if you want to complete this one and find absolutely everything, you could be looking at anywhere between 150 to 200 hours. And the reason I'm recommending this one physically is that CD Projekt Red managed to fit the entire game onto a cartridge rather than making you download. If you're unfamiliar with how the game plays out, it's a third person action adventure title where you play as Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher, which basically means that he is a mutant with superpowers and a very cool silver sword and a horse called Roach. What's nice here is that you can crossplay between PC and Nintendo Switch as well with cloud saves and it's a completely open world. This one includes a lot of the DLC as well that was released originally on PC and I've just seen that you can also pick it up on sale on Amazon US at a slightly increased 33% off. Now Hyperlight Drifter has been on sale for slightly less than this before but this is still a cracking offer. It's 45% off taking it down to around $10 and if you've ever heard anyone talk about this game it's a stone cold classic. You're looking at silky 60 FPS gameplay and I believe a sequel is already in the works so if you haven't played it now might be a good time to do just that. It has this vast open kind of ruined and desolate world that has that mixture of the old technologies and the new. It's really cool. It plays out as an action adventure RPG but it's very silky to control. I think as soon as you get your hands on this you realise that it's going to be something a bit special. It holds a very high Metacritic rating of 88%. It will take you around about 20, maybe even longer, 25 hours if you want to do absolutely everything, find all the secrets, but it can be completed in quite a bit less than that. And it has a download size of 856 megs. Now this sale goes on, I believe, until the 9th of September. Here's another game that's an adventure title. It's probably one of my favourite genres, to be honest. And I can't not recommend it at this price. It's ridiculous. It's The Way Remastered. And yep, it's seen quite a few drops since launch. But this is like 95% off at the moment. It deals with some quite heavy issues, such as the loss of a loved one. And it's not perfect. There's a bit of jankiness towards the end, but... It does feel very retro in its nature, but still has beautiful music and a few modern things in there as well, like HD rumble and the remaster has a voiceover, which is a nice touch. It's going to take probably around about seven hours to complete this one. But if you're after a classic style adventure title, then I think most people would agree at 75 cents or your regional equivalent, the way remastered, you can't go too far wrong. I'd actually be quite interested to find out how many people haven't played Starlink Battle for Atlas. It just didn't seem to get the, I don't know, the momentum at the beginning that perhaps the game deserved because it's a very good title. The overarching aim is to free the galaxy or the star system from Grax and the Forgotten Legion, but you're given far more freedom than you might expect. In this version, which includes a few extras, you start off with five different ships, seven pilots and 12 weapons, and there's quite a lot of customization you can do with your ship. You can mix and match the different parts in terms of the pilot abilities and the weapons. And of course, on the Nintendo Switch version, you get Fox McCloud, which is awesome with his R-Wing ship. This one is quite a hefty 16.3 gigs and has one or two player offline play. And if you're a completionist, there's quite a lot to dive in and look for. The main story is going to probably take you around about 25 hours, maybe a little bit longer. But for those completionists, you're looking at around about 60 to 70 hours. This sale goes on until September the 8th. 
Last but certainly not least, and I bet you most of you have never heard of this, it's Knights and Bikes, which is published by Double Fine Studios. And here's the premise. Saddle up for a bike riding, friendship building, frisbee throwing, goose petting, treasure hunting adventure for one or two players. Your players Nessa and Demelza as they explore an ancient island with their pet goose Captain Honkers, riding and upgrading their bikes on a quest for answers. Have you ever heard anything so awesome? <laughs> I love adventure titles and to be honest this is just this is me all over this kind of game there are different hazards and puzzles that you'll have to face and you gradually build up a collection of frisbees water balloons and toilet plungers and what's really nice is just playing through with another person in this type of game they're usually single player experiences it does have online co-op as well if you'd rather play with a friend over a larger distance but it's a very cool cool game and like I say probably a bit of a hidden gem maybe one that you've never heard of this sale goes on until September the 8th and it has a Metacritic score of 83%, a download size of 3.3 gigs, and it's going to take you around about 9 hours, maybe, if you want to find everything, to complete it. So that takes us on to our two games you should avoid, like a chicken vindaloo and a long commute. Ooh. And first up we have Beat Cop, which I thought looked incredible. I love this like, style. I don't, I've, got, I've got quite a penchant for, I don't know what you'd call it, super low pixel pixel art. I don't know. But yeah, I like it. It reminds me of Future Wars or something like that. But unfortunately, the game's terrible. <laughs> You play as a beat cop, walking up and down the beat, doing your thing, and it's such a slow walking pace, it's just not very fun in terms of what you can actually do with it. I was hoping for like a Police Quest remake or something, but instead it's just dull, I'm afraid. It's on a very low price, so I'm sure some of you have been like peering over the fence at it going, oh look at him, he looks good. He doesn't, trust me, it's not, not good at all. Shame this one. And last, but well, least. <laughs> We have Decay of Logos. Now this was really odd because the developer basically, you, bought, you could buy the game and then all of a sudden, because the performance was so bad, they were like going to re-release it. So a few patches came out and it was like, oh, this is all hunky-dory, but it's still pretty shocking performance. And then suddenly the version you had, you couldn't use it anymore. You boot the game up and it would say, this version is no longer available. Um, you'll get a free version of the game when it's re-released. But then I went to go and get the free version of the game and I couldn't because I had to pay for it, which was, you have an alarm. But that being said, it's still not a great title. It tries to do the Souls-like thing. You've got this mount that moves really slowly. It's super janky. And, and I was really looking forward to this one. One as well so I was quite frustrated with the whole experience it's not a terrible game it's just not a great one and there are far far better titles that have similar gameplay loops and mechanics such as the one and only Dark Souls and with that being said when are we getting number two and three on the switch because it's been a bit long now hasn't it so that's it for this week let me know down in the comments which games you'll be picking up hello to the token guy that says oh Nintendo switch sales are rubbish he's always there he's, he's gonna be there soon so everyone give him a wave congratulations to last week's free game winner if you enjoy the content then do consider sticking around and joining the switch up family and as always for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya